I've stood on the banks of this river too many times to remember. And I don't suspect I'll photograph anything today that I haven't photographed a thousand times. As a matter of fact, I can recall sitting in this exact spot a dozen times this year and I have numerous images of ducks sitting on that log. But I keep coming back. I keep coming back and keep staring at the same scenery and the same ducks. <laughs> and for what? Well, I'll tell you this, it's not for nothing. I've learned a supremely valuable lesson in the last several years of photographing birds. I've learned that nature rewards diligence. Now, I'm not talking about patience. Yeah, sit still, be patient, that matters, of course. No, I'm talking about grit, determination, resolve. You see, it was my fourth or fifth trip to this park before I discovered this patch of downed timber. And since discovering this pile of sticks, I found this little wren. And there's always a song sparrow in that thicket. I've learned so many things about this park in the last four years, and here's the thing. I learn a lot of stuff photographing birds. Okay, I'll admit, I just spent the last six days going through thousands of hours of my own video footage in hopes of putting together some all-inclusive video that summarized everything I learned this year photographing birds. In my mind, this was going to be epic. It would have all the best drone footage, all the coolest moments, and great explanations of why enough is never enough. However, what I learned is that each video was just a snapshot of how I felt in that moment. Yeah, so all the gear talk, long trips, and footage of me standing behind the camera only revealed one thing. It showed that I'm just a guy that really likes photographing birds. But there was one video, one video that I posted eight months ago that I kept going back to. Perhaps it's because it's where I find myself at this moment. Maybe I really needed to hear the message of this video again. There weren't many of you watching these videos back then, so it didn't get a lot of views. And the history behind the video was, well, who cares about the history? I'll just shut up and replay the video. Hopefully this video comes to you at the right time. Enjoy. Oh gosh. Delete, delete, delete. Oh man, sometimes I just get so frustrated with this bird photography. If only I had the words to describe that feeling of, uh, I mean, what is it, dissatisfaction? Yeah, okay, Josh, I get it. Another bird sitting on a stick. Great. Did you really need 60 images of a bird sitting on a stick? Delete. Out of focus. Boring. That's dumb. Background's too busy. Boring. You know what the problem is, is we're inundated with images. Advertising, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And let's be honest, today, even the best image is, well, I mean, it's just forgettable. We've seen it all. Oh, and advice, oh my gosh, so much advice. Always some new guy or girl with the greatest wildlife images ever. And, you know, they wanna give us some pointers on how we can be better. Well, step one, go to Africa. Yeah, exactly. Can't even afford step one. Still more advice, how to improve your images, take better shots now, how to edit your images. I don't know, for what? To get lost in a sea of more images? I get it. I want to stand out. We all want to take beautiful images. But why? I mean, why are there so many videos and articles and books referencing how your bird and wildlife photography can be better. 
You know, I recently read that more than 45 million people watch birds, you know, in and around their homes, away from their home, and it contributes to an $80 billion wildlife economy. 45 million people. <laughs> 45 million people. Really? I mean, that's a lot of people spending a lot of money on watching and photographing birds. Think about it, the binoculars, the bird houses, the bird seed, cameras. Goodness, oh my gosh, the cameras. <sighs> Man, that's a lot of people and a lot of gear. But what about me and you? You know, what about us? How does that help us? What can make our images better? I need real solutions. We need the real stuff. You know, what does it really take? Well, I mean, you know, gear, of course, right? I mean, that certainly makes your images better. That's a given. Gear matters. Just, you know, get more megapixels and a faster frame rate and better autofocus and better ISO performance. And, well, you got to have a full frame. I mean, unless you want a crop sensor and you get more reach. But, you know, you get the point. Gear, it's the answer to everything. You know, but I mean, seriously, though, I have seen some pretty good images with cheap gear. And honestly, I've seen some really bad images with great gear. Hearing all the little birds chattering, trying to figure out what they are. So maybe it's not 100% the gear. Maybe it's the settings. Manual mode, that's the key. All the best photographers use manual mode. And for birds, gotta have a fast shutter speed. Absolutely. I mean, unless it's too dark, then you don't want a fast shutter speed. And metering, you gotta get your metering right. You want a spot meter on the bird. I mean, unless he's far away, and then you want to, you know, area meter, and that's probably best. And, you know, and back to ISO, or is it ISO, or ISO, ISO, I don't know. Let me Google it, see if there's a video for that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to set my auto ISO. But does that mean I'm no longer in manual mode? Ugh, none of that matters anyway if you can't find the birds. Gotta head out to the wildlife refuge or the park or something. Or, or hey, just put some bird food in your backyard and let the birds come to you. Hey, no judgment. Low hanging fruit, still fruit. Hey, but pay attention to the light. Pay attention to the light. Backlight. Front light, side light, no such thing as bad light, just different light. And you have to watch your backgrounds and your foregrounds too. And when it comes to birds, get lower. I mean, unless they're high, then you want to get higher. Eye level, just figure out a way to get eye level. And be sure to compose the shot. Use rule of thirds, because we all know how much we love rules. And, But more importantly, be creative, but rule of thirds. And negative space, you know, you got to focus on your portraits, and then there's birds in flight. But either way, just be creative and always use rule of thirds. <sighs> Man, and look, if you don't get it right in camera, just crop it. I mean, not that much, not that much, just a little bit. Yeah, so that leads us back to editing. More images. Delete. Delete. Okay, I like 
this one. What do we have here? Looky here. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. This one's going on Instagram. This one's going to stand out for sure. <laughs> oh, God, that's a good one. Oh. That might be the prettiest picture you've ever taken. So what am I going to do tomorrow? 